Well, okay, this is uh, the part uh, where I uh, bring a message, and uh, I, I was um, thinking about um, the next steps that we take in our life. In the last few weeks, we've been um, looking at different ones from Scripture, and, uh, and today I want to talk about how, um, our, how our expectations can um, interfere with our relationship with God, or interfere with relationships uh, in our families and, and neighbors, and um, and it can mess things up, uh, the things that, that we expect. So I was thinking about, um, did anybody ever go on a trip anywhere? <laughs> Never? Okay, well then I'll just share about this myself. Well, you know, I, I grew up in, in West Africa as a kid, which totally ruined my life in so many ways, but, um, or I mean affected me positively. But um, <laughs> uh, a few years ago, I had a chance to go back to Africa for the first time. And it was a, such a strange thing. I was, uh, I was getting weird uh, thinking about what it's going to be like, what might happen, you know, the tribal warfare, and they were rioting because there was an election for the president in Kenya, and, and all these kind of things. And and uh, and we were going into Zambia, where uh, we're going to work with AIDS orphans, and everybody had AIDS, and what if I get a splinter or something and go to the hospital and die? And you know, I mean, all those things going on in, in my mind as I'm going over there. And the weirdest thing happened, I was talking with some uh, uh, hotel employees one night, we were sitting around, and, uh, and they wanted to know what life in America was like. And I said, well, I haven't been all over America, but I have lived in, in a few places, you know. Uh, I, I've lived in Seattle. And they went, oh my gosh, how could anyone live in Seattle? I go, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, it rains every day, but, you know. And they go, Oh, we saw in the news a, a volcanic explosion of a mountain. The whole mountain blew up and the sky was dark and ash covered the, the entire state that it was in. Well, oh yeah, well yeah, that happened, sure. Uh, we had that volcano, yeah, okay, Mount St. Helens, but you know, I mean, and then they said, and then we hear that, you know, like when it snows and then it, it freezes at night and, and cars are just sliding on the roads and crashing into each other. Yeah, that, yeah, we got, yeah, we got that, you know. And, and I said, but I also lived in Minnesota. And they went, oh, Minnesota, that, is that that place where the big bridge collapsed in the river in the center of the city? Well, yeah, yeah, that happened, sure, you know, and, and they said, and we've seen the poor people who, who they're forced to live in little shacks out on frozen lakes, and they have to fish for food through the, through the ice, through the ice, trying to get a little bit to eat and feed their families. So we, we just can't even imagine. That. I said, well, you know, it's not that, you know, they do, yeah, they do that, yeah. Their trucks drop in there, too, sometimes, but, um, and then I said, but I'm also, you know, I'm from Southern California, too. Drive-by shootings. Uh, you're in your car, and people will just pull a gun on you uh, when you're trying to get on the freeway. And fires in the hills that that uh, just destroy everything. Yeah, pretty earthquakes. Yeah, pretty. And they're going. We don't think we would ever want to go to America. And I'm thinking, here, I was dreading going there. And, they're kind of, and we've got all these expectations. But what we're used to and what we, and, you know, but it, but it still affects us. And, um, and it affects us when we come to church. And uh, I've seen this over the years. I've been a pastor, and people come with all kinds of uh, history and issues and questions and ideas. And what we bring really has a big impact on uh, how God gets, it, gets through to us. So uh, I want to read today from uh, the New Testament, from uh, Colossians chapter 1. And this goes down to the very uh, basics of, um, of what are faith. And, and what he says is, um, and starting in verse 9, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God and being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience and joyfully give thanks to the Father. And then skip down to verse 19. 
For God was pleased to have all of his fullness, fullness dwell in Christ and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth and things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your own minds because of your evil behavior, but now he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Well, you know, I look at this passage and I go, um, God had an intention for us, but there seems to be this tendency in us to uh, pull away and separate ourselves from God and miss out on what he wants to do for us. And, and we're afraid of moving towards God because we think uh, we don't know what it's going to be like, you know? And, um, and so uh, the thing that strikes me in this is this one statement, God was pleased. And I think, you know, of all the images that, that I had growing up as a kid about God, the idea that he was pleased was usually not one of them. It was usually, you know, God was more like my dad, you know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of angry and absent most of the time, and then would come in and enforce the rules, and, and uh, I never knew what we were going to get at the dinner table, you know, and, I, and so I'd go to church thinking God was just like my dad, and... Uh, and, and I'd be nervous because it might be okay today, but you know, you never know what you're gonna get down the road. And, uh, and so I had expectations. And, and it says here that um, the idea that we were, that uh, we were alienated God, we were enemies, it was in our own minds. That we, we had attitudes that kept us uh, from allowing God to connect with us and to bring us uh, freedom and growth and, uh, and effectiveness in our life and all these things and um, because of what we were thinking and how we blocked blocked out what God wanted to do. Um, now this week, I, I, I had a weird week. It was, uh, it was actually kind of an emotional roller coaster because um, we had uh, six people from a church that I'd uh, been in years ago down in California. You met, some of you met four of them, I think last week. Uh, we hadn't spoken or had contact in eight years and not a word and then all of a sudden we're coming up to visit you <laughs> why <laughs> what <laughs> you know wow uh, and uh, and so and, and I think I would talk about why are they coming I don't know are you sure you don't know yeah I'm sure I don't know what are they gonna do I don't know and I had a friend that I met with on, on Wednesdays, and uh, he, he had us do some bets. You know, he thought 20% they're going to do this, 20% we might do that. And I said, no, no, I think, you know, 30% it's going to be this. And, uh, but it could be this over here, you know, and we had this all laid out, the, the percentages of what uh, this might all be about. And it turns out they just came up, and we had dinner, and we talked, and it was, it was fine, and then they flew home. Uh, but boy, did I go through some agony going into it and uh, after the first night at dinner and then I was going to meet with one of them at their hotel um, just one on one uh, for breakfast and I was like why what's he going to ask me what it's about blah blah you know and uh, and we just had a really nice talk at breakfast <laughs> and I went back home and uh, and uh, I'm so mystified because I spent so much emotional energy bracing or anything and everything that could possibly occur that it was difficult for me just to relax and enjoy being together and having a great dinner and stuff like that, you know, talking about things. And uh, then another couple came from that same place uh, Wednesday and we had a nice lunch at the um, Salmon House and uh, and then they went on their way. And, and then Friday and Saturday, I had been asked to be the uh, speaker at over at University Press Presbyterian Church there where I used to be a pastor and uh, hadn't been there in 20 years and I went to be the speaker for their deacons fall retreat you know I was so nervous it was like what am I getting into what are they thinking uh, it's been 20 years you know and and I was going through my mind all the, you know 
walking into the place dreading it. What if I see someone I know? What if I see people I don't know? What if I see people that I used to know, but I don't know if I know them now? You know, how is this going to be? And and uh, and it ended up being fine, you know, <laughs> Friday night and Saturday. But but I thought, why am I carrying all this baggage of expectations and hope and dread and fear and worry and I carry this? And then I realized I bring that into church with me. I was, well, Sunday morning, okay. I wonder if there's people who know me. I wonder if there's people who don't, I wonder, you know. And, uh, and, and I thought, this is what God must deal with all the time. We're, we're afraid to just let him move towards us in life and come into our life and, and, and bless us and grow us and, and bring us peace and reconciliation because we have our guard up, you know? And, uh, and so, uh, I mean, everybody has issues, but I love that he starts out, and this is really, you know, the basic. Uh, if you want to know what somebody really cares about, find out what they're praying for. Um, we've not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with knowledge of his will. And we pray this in order that you can live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, being fruitful, being strengthened with all power according to his might, and that you may have great endurance and patience and joyful thanks. That's what the bottom line is. That's what God wants for us. And instead of, of uh, embracing that, it's so easy to go, well, I don't know. Maybe God's mad. Maybe God's got an idea. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know. And uh, like me, being crazy, you know, having friends come and visit. And, uh, and it's easy for us to miss what God wants to do. And, uh, and I want to talk about God doesn't want us to be alienated. He doesn't want us to have our relationship with him uh, messed up, and he doesn't want our relationships with each other messed up, and he doesn't want uh, us to be torn up inside so that we're feeling more and more cut off and disconnected in our lives. And, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time being disconnected in my life, and. Um, so I'm kind of an expert on alienation. Um, but um, you know, one of the things that happens is that it starts out with um, communication stopping. Um, th and this is our relationship with God. We, 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 we stop communicating with God. We stop hearing him speak into our life. We stop bringing, like Susie you know, encourages us to bring our prayer requests and things. And, and keep the communication lines open. And when that stops, uh, all kinds of things can happen. Um, because remember a quote I gave you a couple of weeks ago, in the absence of good uh, communication, good information, people project what? Crap. Crap, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a literal translation, but that's, that's pretty much the rest of it. Yeah, we, we get all wrong because we, we, we start thinking things and, and we miss out. It's like, there was a, there's an old story that I lean in my remind each other of when we were going through marriage stuff and that was that uh, sometimes we get things in our mind and it messes up the relationship and, and so there's a story about the guy who was driving along in the storm at night and he had a flat tire in a rural area, deserted area, nobody coming by on the road, he's got a flat tire, he opens the trunk and he doesn't have a jack and so, huh, so he looks around and he sees a light across the, the field, it must be a farmhouse, so he said, well I guess I'll go over there and ask for a jack and you know, maybe they'll have one and they can get going, you know. And so he starts across the field, the rain's coming down, and the storm, and the mud, and he's sloshing through it, and he starts thinking, well, you know, what if I get there, there's nobody home? And uh, that wouldn't be good, because then I'd have to kind of go through their garage and try and find one, and then they think I broke in, and they'll, be, they'll call the police, and I'll go to jail. And uh, But maybe they are home, but then maybe they're selfish, and they're not going to answer the door. Maybe they're afraid, and they don't trust me, so they're going to leave me out in the rain and they're not going to help me or maybe they'll open their door and I'll ask for the jack and, and they're going to say no we've got a jack but we're not going to let you use it because we don't know you and we don't trust you and, uh, and, and he starts brooding and brooding about this and he finally gets to the door and he knocks on the door and, and uh, this nice man says uh, hi can I help you and he goes you can keep your old jack and he walks away <laughs> now Eileen and I talk about that because that's what would happen in our marriage all the time you know I'd be going, oh, well, you know, and then she's going to say, blah, 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 you know, well, there, you know, boom. And all of a sudden she's going, wow, what happened? I just said, hi. <laughs> and, it, and this happens in our relationship with God all the time. 
He's, he's waiting to bless us and grow us and set us free. And we're going, yeah, well, I bet he's really angry about this. And, that. and we create a scenario because there's bad communication. And, and when, the, when the communication starts to go, then distrust follows, right? I don't know if I can count on this person. I don't know if I can count on the Lord. I don't know if, if uh, this is going to be right. And so we start to be skeptical and we, and we make ourselves kind of observers and objective and, and trying to see because we don't really trust and we don't want to get hurt, right? I, mean, I, I don't want to get hurt again, you know? And, and so the communication starts to go and then, and then the distrust grows. And then, then not a surprise, and, you know, problems occur. They increase. They get more and more problems, and things we're working on, and they're not getting worked out, and, and we're struggling with this, and not seeing it resolved, and then we think we've got things worked out, and then something new happens, and we're going, boy, this life is not the way I thought it would be, and so we've got bad communication, to distrust, to uh, more and more problems, and pretty soon we just don't know what else to do. We're, we're alienated, we're cut off, and so we just become really self-centered, you know, and we just will take care of my own business. I'm not gonna let anybody get close. I'm gonna guard everything. I'm gonna handle it myself poorly, but I'll still be me doing it. You know, pretty soon we just get ourselves all walled off. And this, this Bible passage says, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through him to reconcile to himself all things things on earth and in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your own minds, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. <laughs> God doesn't want us living walled off, ticked off, isolated, misunderstood, uh, defensive, non community He doesn't want that for us. He doesn't want that kind of relationship with us and he doesn't want us to have that relationship with each other. And, and the whole point is that a lot of this happened because of the way we were thinking. And it happens because we're enemies in our own mind. And it's time for us to start thinking differently and start thinking in a new way and start looking at our life differently and the people around us differently and our situations differently and even our relationship with the Lord differently. And instead of seeing him uh, distant and aloof and, and unhappy, we see that God was pleased. He was pleased. And we need to see him welcoming us into a relationship with him that's open and communicating and free and, and free from all that baggage and misunderstanding and uh, misperceptions that, that we tend to bring. You know, for all my anxiety this week, you know, there's a Bible verse that says, uh, and Susie's reminded us of it sometimes, it's, it says, be anxious for nothing. And I realized all this week I was anxious for nothing. Totally, <laughs> which is the wrong interpretation of that verse, but it, it, <laughs> everything I was worried about and I was stewing about and I was uncomfortable with and I was dreading and I was spending my time making scenarios about what could happen or would happen or might happen or how I would respond to it if they did this, then I would say this, and if they do that, I'm going to do this, and if they do that, she's going to do that, you know, and, and all of these things swirling around, we ended up having a nice dinner. It was actually pretty cool, you know? What order Palisade? They paid! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> then we went to Salty's with brunch, and there's a lot of food out there on Alki Point. They paid again! And I thought, wow, I have spent the week chewing up everything, getting ready for the bad, getting ready for the unhappy surprise, getting ready for what might occur. What a waste, you know? And then I think, that's exactly what I do in my relationship with God. 
I spent my life, oh, God's going to be angry about this. Oh, God's going to, he doesn't care. He's involved. I don't know why I'm even praying about this. Nothing happened. And, and then he goes, I'm pleased. I want you to prosper. I want you to be free. I want you to be loved. I want you to not carry around all this stuff. Westfall, give it up. That's what God says to me. <laughs> Westfall, let it go. And, uh, and when I do, I begin to realize, okay, I can grow. And I can look at things differently. And I can relate to people differently. And I can uh, begin to trust God and, and see him working in situations and realize that I don't have to handle it all myself and that he's there for me. All of those things begin to happen. Um, so, there's a home, I'm going to give a homework assignment. Oh, see, this is where you all groan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me putting expectations on you, sorry. Uh, okay, here's a homework assignment for you. I want you this week to, to make a little circle on a piece of paper. And I want you to, to write down one thing of where communication is breaking down either uh, maybe someone in your family or at work or or your relationship with god where are you seeing the the communication stopping or getting wrong and then i want you to 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 make another uh spot on your paper and i want you to say okay uh, where are you feeling mistrusting and then i want you to ask God, and this is going to force you to have a little communication here, I want you to ask God to show you that he is pleased, that he is pleased with you in your life, and to show you how you can be free from all these expectations and things that you bring. And then as he shows you, write that down. Set it up and write it down and let him, let him show you, God's pleased with me. He wants me to grow. He wants me to know his power. He wants me to know his love. He wants me to know his forgiveness and not live under this burden of um, what might happen, what the scenarios. It's true that Mount St. Helens blew up in Seattle, but it's not a bad place to live. <laughs> it did do that. It does rain every day. It's still okay to live here. No, it's okay. All right. Well, we're going to have lunch now, so let me pray with us, and we're going to do one more song, and then uh, head downstairs to lunch. You're all welcome. It's all free. It's all good. And uh, glad to have you all here today. So, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and care that pursues us and doesn't let us go. And we thank you that you are pleased. And that you want us to be reconciled to you. And you don't want us to be pulling away because of our experiences or expectations or strange thinking. And so show us how you connect with us and set us free by your love. That's our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen.